Hi, today we're going to be learning about multiplying and dividing common fractions. First, let's take a look at multiplying common fractions. If we are going to multiply common fractions, like in this example over here, 3 over 10 times 4 over 3, there are two ways that we can go about this. The one way is to multiply and then simplify, and the other way is to simplify and then multiply. Okay, so if I multiply first, I always multiply numerators and numerators, denominators and denominators. I don't multiply the top or the bottom. I multiply the top and the top, and I multiply the bottom and the bottom. So it's going to be 3 times 4 is 12 over 10 times 3 is 30. And then I would simplify it. Because remember, we always have to simplify as far as possible. So I would simplify this and I'd say, okay, well, 3 goes in here 10 times, 3 goes in there 4 times, and that leaves me with 4 over 10. And then I can simplify that further and I can say that 2 goes in there 5 times and 2 goes in there twice, leaving me with 2 over 5. I could have divided by 6 straight away on the top and the bottom. That would, would have given me 2 over 5 straight away. Okay, so that is the one method where we multiply first and then we simplify. The other method, if I take the same question, 3 over 10 times 4 over 5, is to first simplify everything that I can and then multiply. So that would be anything that is in any numerator that is a common factor with anything in any denominator, I can simplify that. This is supposed to be 4 over 5, so that's I mean, 4 over 3. There we go. Okay. So it's 3 over 10 times 4 over 3. So 3 can simplify with 3 because they're the same. I can divide by 3 on both, and that gives me 1 and 1. Over here, I can divide by 2, and that gives me 2. And here, I can divide by 2, and that gives me 5. So now, I have no more common factors in the numerators and the denominators. I can cancel anything that is in any numerator with anything that is in any denominator if they have common factors. Okay, so over here, I can't cancel anything else out. I can't simplify anything more. So now I'm going to go and multiply my numerators. So that's 1 times 2 is 2 over 5 times 1, which is 5. Okay, now it doesn't really matter in terms of getting the final answer which of these two methods we use, but this method is preferable because it means you're going to end up having smaller numbers. If you look over here, when I multiplied these together, I ended up with 12 and 30, which I had to then simplify. Those are bigger numbers than what I had originally. Now, in this case, it wasn't really a major issue because 12 and 30 are still relatively small. But when you're starting to simplify bigger fractions or fractions with bigger numbers that are being multiplied together, then it helps to not multiply first because otherwise you're going to make your numbers even bigger that you're dealing with. And it's better to keep your numbers as small as possible because then it's going to, there's less room for error. There's less chance of you making mistakes. So I recommend always simplifying first and then multiplying together instead of multiplying first and then simplifying. But you always need to check, once you've multiplied, check that you have in fact simplified everything that you can. Make sure that there's nothing else there that you can still simplify. Okay, so that is the method I'm going to be using in this lesson. We're going to be simplifying as much as we can and then multiplying together. All right, so let's have a look at a, an example over here where we're going to be simplifying this question where we've got 1 and 1 sixth multiplied by 5 over 9 times 2 and 4 over 7. Now, just like when we were doing the addition and subtraction of fractions, the first thing we have to do is make sure that there are no mixed numbers. So I'm going to have to first change the 1 and 1 sixth and the 2 and 4 sevenths to improper fractions, and then I can go and I can simplify further by multiplying. Okay, so over here, I'm going to first write this down. I've got 1 and 1 sixth times 5 ninths times 2 and 4 sevenths. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change all the mixed numbers to improper fractions. So to do that, remember, we take the whole number, we multiply it by the denom denominator, and we add the numerator. So it's going to be 1 times 6 is 6, plus 1 is 7. That gives me 7 over 6 times. This is already not a mixed number, so I can keep it as it is, times, and then over here, same thing, I multiply the whole number by the denominator, so that's 2 times 7 is 14, and then I add the numerator, giving me 18, so that's 18 over 7. So now that I've got that, I can go and simplify. 
So now I'm going to go and look for any common factors that are in the numerator and in the denominator. So over here I can see already I've got 7 in the numerator here and 7 in the denominator over there. So I can cancel those out. If 7 goes in there once, 7 goes in there once. Okay. If there's anything else that is the same straight away, then you can do the same thing. In this case, I don't have anything else that is completely the same, but now I have other common factors that I can work with. I've got 9 over here, and I've got 18 over there. 9 goes into 18 twice, and into 9 once. And over here, once I've done that, I can still simplify further, because I've got a 2 that I ended up with over here, and this 2 I can cancel with a 6 over there. 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 6 once three times. And now I have nothing else that I can simplify. I've only got ones, one, 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 and there I've got five and three, and they don't have common factors, so I can't simplify anything further there. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to multiply my numerators. That gives me one times five times one is five over my denominators, three times one times one is three. So my final answer is five over three. And I check and make sure that I can't simplify that any further, just in case I missed anything when I was doing my cancelling out earlier. So I can't simplify anything further there. There's, there are no common factors. So I am done with that question. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to do for yourself. The first one you're going to do is this one. You've got nine over eight times two over three. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to work on this question. Okay, so let's go through that. So in this question, 9 over 8 times 2 over 3, I don't need to change anything, any mixed numbers to improper fractions because there aren't any mixed numbers. So I can go straight on to my simplification. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and look and see if there are any common factors in the numerators and denominators. So I can see over here I've got 9 and 3. 3 and 9 are both divisible by 3. So 3 goes in there once, 3 goes in there three times. And then I've got over here 8 and 2. They are both divisible by 2. 2 goes in there once, 2 goes in there four times. Then I, I have nothing left in this fraction to work with, but this one I've got 3 and 4. They don't have any common factors, so I don't have anything else that I can simplify. So I'm going to go and I'm going to multiply. So I'm going to multiply my numerators. So that's 3 times 1 is 3 over my denominators. 4 times 1 is so that's what you should have got for question A, 3 over 4. Right, question B. Here we've got 10 over 15 times 30 over 12 times 9 over 20. I'm going to give you one minute to work on this question. Okay, so let's see what you got for that. So over here, the first thing I'm going to do is check if there are any mixed numbers. In this case, there aren't. So I'm going to go on to my simplification. So I'm going to be looking for common factors at the top and at the bottom of any of the fractions. So I've got over here 10 and over here 20. So I'm going to simplify those. I'm going to say 10 goes in there once and 10 goes in there twice. Okay, then over here I've got 15 and 30. 15 goes in here once and 15 goes in there twice. And then these twos over here, I can cancel out. I can say two goes in there once and two goes in there once. So I don't have to worry about those twos anymore. So the only things I've got left, I've got one, 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 one. The only things that aren't ones 
is the 9 over here and the 12 over there. 3 goes into 9 3 times, 3 goes into 12 4 times. So that leaves me with 1 times 1 times 3 at the top, which is 3, over 1 times 4 times 1 at the bottom, which is 4. So you should have ended up with 3 over 4 for question B. Right, question C. Here we have got 1 and 20 over 50 times 12 over 14. And I'm going to give you a minute to work on this one again. Okay, so let's go through that example. So the very first thing you had to do with this one was change this fraction, which is a mixed number, into an improper fraction. So I'm going to say 1 times 50 is 50, plus 20 is 70. So that gives me 70 over 50. And then this is already not a mixed number, so I can just keep it as it is, times 12 over 14. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to simplify. The very first thing I'm going to do over here is I'm going to say I've got multiples of 10. So I'm going to simplify that by dividing both of those by 10, giving me 7 and 5. Okay, then I can see I've got 7 over here and 14 over there. 7 goes into 7 once, 7 goes into 14 twice. And then the 2 that I'm left with over here, I can simplify with a 12. And I can say 2 goes in there once and 2 goes in there 6 times. So I'm left with 1 over there and 1 over there. But then the, the other numbers that aren't ones are the 6 and the 5. 6 and 5 don't have any common factors, so I'm not going to do anything else there. I could just multiply my numerators, giving me 1 times 6 is 6, over my denominators, 5 times 1 is 5. So you should have got, for this question, 6 over 5. Okay, then question D. Here you've got 1 and 26 over 28 times 10 over 42 times 1 and 13 over 15. I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this question.
Okay, so let's go through that example. So over here you had 1 and 26 over 28, which we need to change to an improper fraction. So 1 times 28 is 28, plus 26, that gives you 54 over 28. Times, I don't need to do anything to this one, so it stays 10 over 42 times and then 1 times 15 is 15 plus 13 is 28 over 15. Okay, so now I've got my improper fractions. Now I can go and I can simplify by cancelling out any common factors in the numerators and denominators of my fractions. So first, if I look over here, I can see I've got 28 there and 28 there. I can simplify those and divide both of them by 28, giving me 1 and 1. Okay, then I've got 10 and 15. 5 goes into both of them. 5 goes into 10 twice. 5 goes into 15 three times. Okay, then I've got 2 and 42. Let's just simplify that quickly. 2 goes in there once, 2 goes in there 21 times. Okay, now I am going to simplify the 54 and the 3. So 54 divided by 3 is 18. So this is going to go 3 goes in there once, 3 goes into 54 18 times. And then the 18 and the 21 I can still simplify as well. 3, go, or, yeah, three goes into, into 18 six times, and 3 goes into 21 seven times. Now, there's nothing else I can simplify. I've got 6, 1, and 1, and at the bottom, I've got 1, 7, and 1. So I'm going to go and multiply my numerators, giving me 6 times 1 times 1 is 6, over 1 times 7 times 1, which is 7. And that's what you should have got for question D. That's how we do multiplication. Now we're going to go on to dividing common fractions. Now dividing common fractions is going to work very in a very similar way to multiplying common fractions. We're going to end up doing the same thing, but there's something special we have to do first. Okay, so what we're going to do is if you have a fraction, say for instance you are dividing by a half. Say you're saying 3 divided by a half. Okay, what this means is how many halves are there in three? Okay, so if I take three circles and I say how many halves are there in three, over here I divide each circle into halves and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six halves in three. So three divided by a half is six. Okay, what if I was going to work out four divided by a third? Okay, so let's take four circles and divide them all up into thirds and see how many thirds there are in four. So here I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and that gives me twelve. So there are four, there are twelve thirds in four. Now this over here, I could have got that same answer if I had said. 3 times 2, it also gives me 6. And over here, 4 times 3 also gives me 12. Okay, so when I'm dividing by a fraction, it's actually the same as multiplying by the inverse of that fraction. 2 is the same as 2 over 1, which is the inverse of a half. And over here, 3 is the same as 3 over 1, which is the inverse of a third. So when I'm dividing by a fraction, then I can actually multiply by the inverse of that fraction to work it out. Okay, And then once I'm doing multiplication, it works the same as the multiplication we were just doing. So what we do is we tip and time. So if I have a question like this, 9 over 10 divided by 3 over 2. Okay. I'm going to tip and times. Tip and times is tipping over the fraction that goes directly after the divide sign. Okay, so we're going to tip this one over. Like we were doing over there, we have the inverse. It's going to change to 2 over 3. And we change the divide sign to a multiplication sign with times. So we're going to tip in times. This fraction stays as it is. It hasn't changed. The only things that change are the divide sign and the fraction straight after it. The fraction straight after it flips over. 
okay and then we're going to go and simplify so i would say okay so over here three goes in there and three goes in there once and three times two goes in there once two goes in there five times and i end up with three over five so then once you've done your tipping and timesing you can then just go and simplify as normal so three over five and that is how you're going to work out your division so when you're doing dividing of fractions you look and see are there any when you're simplifying multiplication and division of fractions, you look and see are there any divide signs. If there are divide signs, you take the divide sign, you change it to a times, and you flip the fraction right after it over. Only the fraction that is right after it. You don't flip any other fractions over unless there are more divide signs. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing for these questions. So let's have a look at the first example over here. So in this example, we have got 5 over 6 divided by 2 and 7 over 9. So now, just like what we were doing with our multiplication, the very first thing we have to do is change our mixed number to an improper fraction. So that gives me 5 over 6 divided by, and then 2 times 9 is 18, plus 7 is 25 over 9. Okay, so before I do any tipping and timesing, I have to get rid of my mixed numbers, change them to improper fractions. So now I've changed that, now I can go and tip and times. I've got a divide sign here, I'm going to change it to a time sign. Everything else stays as it is. The divide sign changes to a time sign and I change the fraction right after it and I flip it over and I invert it. That gives me 9 over 25. Now I can go and simplify. I can cancel out anything that I can cancel and then multiply. So 5 goes into both of those. 5 goes into there once. 5 goes into there 5 times. And then 3 goes into both of those. 3 goes into there twice. And 3 goes into there three times. Now I don't have anything else that I can cancel out, so I'm going to go and multiply my numerators. So that's one times three is three over my denominators, two times five is ten. And that's what you get for that example. So when we're doing division, we are going to tip in times. First you check and see if there are any mixed numbers that need to be changed, and you change those. Then you see if there are any divide signs. If there are divide signs, you change them to a times and you flip the fraction right after it over. You tip it over, you multiply by the inverse of that fraction. And then you just do your multiplication like normal, like what we were just doing in the examples before. Okay, so now you're going to do a few for yourself. So the first example that you're going to do is this one, question A. We've got 21 over 15 divided by 49 over 14. And I'm going to give you 30 seconds to work on this question. Okay, so let's go through that example. So over here, we've got 21 over 15 divided by 49 over 14. The first thing we're going to do is there are no mixed numbers, so I can go straight onto my tipping and timesing. I'm going to change this divide sign to a time sign. I'm going to flip over the fraction that comes after it. So the fraction before it doesn't change, 21 over 15 stays as it is, and I change the divide to a times, and I tip this fraction over. So that becomes 14 over 49. Once I've done that, I can go and simplify any common factors. So over here, I've got 21. 7 goes into 21, and 7 also goes into 49. So I can say 7 goes in there 3 times, 7 goes in there 7 times. Then 7 also goes into 14 over here, so I can say 7 goes in there twice, and 7 goes in there once. So now my 7s are cancelled out. I've got a 3 over here and a 15 that I can still simplify. So 3 goes in there once and 3 goes in there 5 times. And now I don't have anything else that I can simplify. So I'm going to go and multiply my numerators, giving me 1 times 2, which is 2, over my denominators, which is 5 times 1, which is 5. So for that question, you should have got 2 over 5. Right, next question. Question B, we have got... 
15 over 21 divided by 18 over 49 times 8 over 35. Now be careful with this one. You are only going to tip in times where there is a divide sign. Okay, so be careful. Right, I'm going to give you one minute to work on this question. Okay, so let's go through that question. So here, the first thing you have to do is tip and times. There's nothing to change to mix to improper fractions. So I'm going to tip and times over here where I've got the divide, 18 over 49. So I've got 15 over 21, that doesn't change. Times, I'm gonna change that to a time sign and then tip this over, 49 over 18. And then this one, be careful, this does not change. It's only the fraction that is directly after the divide sign that's going to tip over. So you're not going to change the 8 over 35 because it's after a time sign, it's not after a divide sign. So I'm going to keep that as it is times 8 over 35. Now that I've got all multiplication, I can go and I can do my simplification. So I can say over here, 21 and 49 are both divisible by 7. 7 goes into 21 3 times. 7 goes into 49 7 times. And then 7 goes into 7 and 7 goes into 35 like that. So that becomes 1 and this becomes 5. Over here, then I've got 3 left, which I can divide into my 15. 3 goes into 15 3 or 5 times and 3 goes into 3 once. Then I've got five over there and five over here. So I can simplify those, giving me one and one. So now all I've got left is one, 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 one. And then over here, I've got eight and 18. I can still simplify those because two goes into eight four times, two goes into 18 nine times. Now there's nothing else I can do. So I'm going to multiply my numerators, giving me one times one times four, which is four over one times nine times one which is nine. So that's what you should have got for question B. Right, question C. Here we've got one and three over 12 divided by three and 15 over 20 divided by six over 18. I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this question.
Okay, so let's go through that question. So over here, you had 1 and 3 over 12 divided by 3 and 15 over 20 divided by 6 over 18. The first thing we have to do is change these mixed numbers into improper fractions. So over here, 1 times 12 is 12, plus 3 is 15. So that gives me 15 over 12 divided by 3 times 20 is 60, plus 15 is 75 over 20 divided by 6 over 18. So my first step is to change any improper or any mixed numbers into improper fractions. Then I'm going to go and tip and times. So now I can change any divide signs to time signs and I'm going to flip over any fractions that are right after those divide signs. So the 15 over 12 stays as it is because it's not after a divide sign. So 15 over 12 and then this divide sign changes to times and this flips over. 20 over 75 and then this divide sign changes to times and this flips over 18 over 6 okay so now i've tipped in times now i need to go and simplify i need to cancel out any fr uh, factors that are common in my numerators and denominators so first i have got over here 15 goes into 15 once and 15 goes into 75 five times okay then 6 goes into 6 once, 6 goes into 18 three times. 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes into 20 four times. 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 12 four times. And then 4 goes into 4 once, and 4 goes into 4 once. So now what I'm left with is 1 times 1 times 1 in my numerator over 1 times 1 times 1 in my denominator. Every single thing has cancelled out. And when that happens, you end up with 1. It's 1 over 1, but we don't need to write that. We just write 1. Okay, so that's what you should have got for question C. And then the last question for today, question D, is this one over here. You've got 1 and 3 over 147 times 21 over 35 divided by 25 over 35. And I'm going to give you two minutes for this question as well. Okay, so let's go through that last question for today. So over here, the first thing we're going to do is change this mixed number to an improper fraction. So 1 times 147 is 147 plus 3 is 150. So that gives you 150 over 147 times 21 over 35 divided by 25 over 35. Okay, so the next step after we've changed that to an improper fraction is to tip in times. So now I'm going to change this to 150 over 147. That stays the same. This also stays the same. 
but this is going to now change the divide sign changes to a time sign and this tips over so I've got 35 over 25 okay so now that I've got that I can go and cancel out any common factors so the 35 and the 35 I can cancel out straight away 35 goes in there once 35 goes in there once 25 goes into 156 times and 25 obviously goes into itself once so that leaves me with 111 and over here I've got 6 then here I've got 21 and 147 now I don't know just looking at it if 21 goes into 147 but it's always wise to just check so I'm going to use my calculator I'm going to check 147 divided by 21 equals and yes it does go in evenly it goes in seven times so I don't need to use smaller fra uh, factors I can straight away divide by 21 21 goes in there once 21 goes in there seven times if I didn't do that I would have had to divide by three divide by seven but I can check and I can use my calculator to check and I can see okay 21 goes into both of those and I can divide straight away by 21 okay and then I'm left with 6 times 1 times 1 in my numerator which is 6 over in my denominator 7 times 1 times 1 is 7 and that's what you should have got for question D and that is how we multiply and divide common fractions now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.